Cam here from Xano, and our conditionals have typically adhered to a very binary if or else. Now, we figured that we should probably allow our users to have more expressive ways and control over how they route their logic. And so with our conditional statement, we've added the else if clause. Your condition is going to operate in the same way. That is, we're going to evaluate the first clause, and if it's true, we'll return the data or execute the logic within that block. And if it's not, we'll proceed to the next clause to evaluate. Instead of going from if to else, now we can go from if to else if to additional else ifs. The sky's the limit, and you can add as many as you'd like. Now, because conditions are so versatile, in this particular example, you can see I've nested another conditional within my else clause. If none of these clauses are evaluated to be true, we'll default to our else, where we'll then evaluate additional arguments. What we're doing in this particular function is passing in a color and a value, hex or decimal. If I open up my run and debug and pass in red and hex and click run, you can see that we are executing the first clause here and it's returning that information. If I was to go to my input and type in blue hex and click run, you could see that it's also returning that information. It is going to sequentially pass through each clause here until it goes to that default down here. And what we can see is that we have red and blue. So if I was to pass in blue decimal, again, it's going to evaluate all of those statements, but it does it so fast and it finds the clause that is evaluated to true and returns that information. And of course, if none of our data is able to be evaluated to true, we will default to our else clause. We'll click run and maybe we need to add more colors. Now, this isn't the only way to route logic in Xano. We actually have a different means of being able to, well, evaluate if things are true or not and do something depending on them. Let's go ahead and take a look at the newest addition, our switch statement. In this particular function stack, we're passing in a number one, a number two, and an operator. In our actual function stack, you can see our switch function. Our switch function is going to take a value. This value is going to be compared to things we call cases. Cases are going to compare that value against itself. And if it is that value, or essentially if it's a true, we are going to execute that code within that case. You'll see here that we also have this break UI and within the panel on our right, we have stop after match. This is going to execute our logic and after it's done so, it'll continue and proceed on with anything else within our function stack. So to demonstrate this, I'll go ahead and create a variable and I'll say this is our ending message. We'll go ahead and say congrats and click save and we'll add this to our response. So that when I click run and I pass in, say, number one and number two, uh, being two and five respectively, and the operator of addition and click run, not only do we get our results, but we also see that it executes the logic after the case. So we have the ability to sort of like segment our logic. Not everything demands or requires a case, but you can see here if things are deterministic to a point where we know that there are certain outcomes, we can use a switch case function that's going to allow us to pass in an argument and then execute the logic within that case. So mentioned before in our conditionals, we actually default to values if these arguments are never evaluated to true. And the same goes for our switch case here where you can see if none of these cases are evaluated to true, we are going to have a default. Our default is simply going to be that message or whatever happens within this code block if nothing else is evaluated to true. We can go ahead and test this out by passing in something that exists within our enum list. We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and random. So if we pass in random, we don't currently have a case for that. That means we'll go ahead and default. If we click run, we then get that response. This didn't compute correctly, so please try again with different numbers and approved operators. Now, of course, not to be pedantic, this operator is approved, but for the demonstration of what defaulting looks like. Let's go ahead and move on to the next switch example. In the next switch example, you'll notice right off the bat, in some of these cases, we don't break. Now, this is helpful if we have a system that we know needs to run in a particular order or if certain data matches up with certain argument cases. Now, what I mean by this is we can pass in a day of the week, let's say one through seven. So if I pass in one and I click run, 
What's going to happen? Well, it's not going to break on case one. It won't break on case two. And it will break on case three. It's going to say it's a weekday to our variable of x1. If we scroll down to x1, you can see that we're simply returning this in our function stack. This isn't a return statement. This is simply that variable being stored with a value and then returned to us after the switch is done computing. We'll click run. And it's a weekday. It goes through each case until it stops or is told to break. And then it returns that value for us. We can demonstrate what this looks like as well with day of the week four, where it's almost the weekend. It breaks immediately on this one because we're telling it to, of course. And the same goes, of course, for typing in value five or six. Those values won't break. They'll simply get to the case where they're told to break, storing the value. It's the weekend inside the variable of x1 and then returning it in our response. We can demonstrate what that looks like by simply passing in five where it would be the weekend, six, where it's still the weekend, and of course, seven, where it's also still the weekend. Similar to the last example, we also have our default case. So if we're passing in a value that isn't able to be evaluated in any of these cases, and we click run, we'll default it. So now you have the ability to control the route of your logic with that much more customization, whether it's with conditionals or switches. If you want to go ahead and reach out to us, you can within the intercom support chat within your instance. Or you can also reach out to us on the community. Thanks so much for watching and happy building.